How are you? Oh, I got it. I'm good. How are you? Good. Okay. It looks like we are actually recording. So if at any point you guys need to mute yourself, just click on the microphone and it'll mute yourself. Um, but this is really for all of us to share. So, um, you know, speak up or, or say something whenever you, you guys kind of feel you need to. Um, I wanted to have a, a series of calls. Um, specifically, I was going to open it just to my team, but then I said, you know what, this will benefit everybody. So I'm opening it up to everybody in Arlene's, Arlene's entire organization. So um, I posted to all the directors um, in Arlene's page a list of this upcoming Zoom calls that you guys can post to your teams so that they can feel free to listen in and is, the, the Zoom link is there. So all they have to do on, on a, a weekly basis is click in on the link and it'll take them into the call. Um, I scheduled them from today. Today's gonna be the only Thursday one. Subsequently after this, it's gonna be on Wednesdays. So the next series of calls will actually be um, Wednesday the 24th, Wednesday the 31st, uh, Wednesday the 7th, um, I skipped the 14th of February, obviously, because that's Valentine's Day. Um, some of us will get lucky. I'm not sure. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> lucky meaning we'll get treated to dinner or something like that. Get your minds out of it. Oh, oh, no. In my house, it's called Home Depot Day from when Ron and I were dating. Oh, okay, good. Everybody has their own little quirks. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, um, I have a very good friend who uh, has been married for 31 years, and their very first Valentine's Day, um, her and her fiancé at that point, um, actually went to the grocery store and bought a frozen pizza. <laughs> and that's what they have for Valentine's Day every single year now, is a frozen pizza. Oh, that's um, funny. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we skipped the, the week of the 14th, um, but then we went on to the 21st and the 28th. So that's the series of them. And if you just look at that kind of post um, in either the director page or when Arlene posted to, posted to your team or in my group page, um, you'll see the topics that are going to be covered each week. Okay. But this, this particular topic is really all about um, bookings. Um, I know we're all kind of trying to wrap our head around, you know, getting out of the snowstorms and January bookings and, uh, for those of you who are doing home shows, you may be running into some cancellation because of bad weather. Um, and for those of you who are do doing, um, you know, virtual shows, you may be running into issues with, you know, questions like, oh, you know, it's, it, no one has money or whatever the case may be because it's after Christmas. So um, the object really is to don't get deflated. You know, I always think of it this way. My business... I treat my business like it's a business I have to leave the house for and open the door to. If I relied on just that one or two customers each day that I contact or comes into my store to keep my business afloat, yeah, chances are I'm not going to have a business. And if I get deflated because I'm having, you know, running into some obstacles, and I decide, oh, I'm just not gonna open the store today. Well, how many days can I do that before I go out of business? You know, we have the luxury of working from home, but it's also an inconvenience because we take advantage of the fact that we work from home. And we'll get, we'll say to ourselves, oh, we'll get to that later. Or, um, you know, Obviously, this is a business that you're going to work around your personal life, but the problem is you still have to work it around your business, your personal life. You have to be consistent with kind of touching your business, however you're going to touch it, every single day. And that's where, you know, the, the, the concept behind this business is think of, of a ball or think of a wheel and you're rolling uphill. You're going uphill. If you're rolling that wheel up the hill and you stop, once you stop and you're halfway up the hill, it's twice as hard to get the wheel rolling again. Mm -hmm. But if you keep the momentum going every single day, 
it's a little bit easier. Yeah, you get tired. Yeah, you get frustrated. Yeah, you may not see the top, but it's still easier to roll that wheel up the hill than to stop and start it again. So that's what we're kind of talking about today. Um, and what I want you to do is I want you to just have on this piece of paper, I want you to ask yourself these questions, okay? And here's the first questions. First question, excuse me. Do you currently have your own show going right now, whether it be a catalog show, a kitchen show, or a virtual show? Do you have your own show running right now? And do you do one for yourself, at least one for yourself every month? That's the first question I want you to ask yourself. And here's the reason why I want you to ask that question to yourself. One, how many times have you run into customers on social media, out and about, wherever it may be, who you try immediately to get them interested in Pampered Chef and hosting a show, and they say no. But in that same conversation, you still hear from them, oh my God, I love Pampered Chef. I own blah, 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 and they fill in the blanks. And we, we stop because they've said no to hosting a show, we forget that they may want to buy a product. So treat your online customers or treat your, your contacts the same way. People may want to buy products, but don't necessarily want to host a show. The object is to, to look at that and say, great, if you need a new pizza stone or you need a new food chopper or a new manual food processor, great. Here's a link. I currently have an open show going now. Because in, in reality, in reality, it doesn't take much. That's my phone. Hold on one second, I'm sorry. Oh. If I try to mute it, I'm gonna hang up on them, so just bear with me. Um, I have reached Alan and Brian, Senior Sales Director with the Pampered Chef. I should have known that. Right? I forgot to shut my phone off. Your name, your Hold number, on. A... Hello? Uh, yeah, Diane, is it possible for, you, for me to call you right back? I'm actually on a call. All right, not a problem. Thanks. Uh, I'm trying to arrange a, a hall. I have, I have a function note that I need to get to. Anyway, so think about those people who actually um, want to buy a product. And, and what does really hosting your own show for you this month mean? You have to double host product, double host credits. Okay. And what else? Um, business for the next upcoming month, if you can get somebody to book a show off of Oz or... Okay. I mean, in reality, what, what, what you're talking about here is hosting a show for yourself. Once you get to that level of getting enough products, en enough orders for yourself, that's fucking double free products, plus the commission off of your own show. So in addition to that, you put the show in your husband's name, your son's name, your daughter's name, whoever, and now you've got someone who is now a asked host excuse me, who, who's someone who can now, you have control over getting the future party per pick from. So think about the benefits every month of hosting your own show. Now, I don't know who in the group here is on direct ship. Is anybody here on direct ship? No. Okay. So in reality, what you really want to do is you want to host two shows a month. You want to host a show from the 1st to the 14th and you close it on the 15th and then you open up another show on the 16th and you run it till the, la the, the day before the last day of the month. That's going to give you the opportunity of getting paid twice, being active for the month 
in addition to that, the people who are hosting, who are placing orders with you from those shows, they don't have to wait too long to get their orders. But you make it very specific when you set the show up. Okay, guys, when as you start collecting those orders, you're going to say something like, okay, all of these orders I'm collecting will be submitted on the 14th. And you'll have your products within six or seven days after. It. So they're not waiting the whole month to get their products. By splitting it in two, it benefits you. You're getting two paychecks. They don't have to wait for their orders. And in reality, it gives you a feel for being able to do this again the following month. And obviously, we all know once we have that show and those people place their orders, there's your contact. There's your contact for you to reach out, thank them for their order, get them interested in the product, get them interested in potentially hosting a show. But the key to that is when you run these shows and you do it virtually on, uh, in a Facebook event, let's say, it's a great way to connect with these people as the event is, is going on. It's a great way to kind of see what they're saying, see what they need, post what they, what they like, what they don't like, and then you sideline a conversation with them. Okay, so that's number one. You always wanna make sure that you have at least one, if not two shows running a month. Okay. Question number two, do you have all the bookings you want on your calendar right now? I know I don't. Not for February. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. <clears throat> Question number three, how many shows each month? Now listen to this question carefully. How many shows each month? Well, let me restate that. How many shows this month do you want to submit? And how many shows do you want to submit on a monthly basis? Now, keep in mind, I mean, I'm looking at the people who are online here, and I'm seeing some of us are seasoned. Now, when I talk about seasoned, I'm talking about, you know, three, four, five, six years and more, okay? Um, and, and why I use that word seasoned, um, for those of you who have been here less than a year, don't get scared when I say this, but it takes you a full year to go through a full cycle before you have the constant contacts to go back to. Yeah. <laughs> and what I mean by that is if you started in December, well, you have no past December to go by. If you started in, in October, you have no past October yet. It's only when you go through a full year do you have those people to go back to as your, your first and foremost contacts, okay? But... Excuse me for a minute. Can you repeat that third question again, the second part of it? Sure. How many shows each month? Well, how many shows this month? Mm -hmm. And how many shows each month do you want to submit? Not hold. Submit. Thank you. And the reason why I use that word submit is this. If you want to submit four shows in January, then you need to have six shows booked. Mm. If you want to submit six shows each month, then you want to have eight shows booked. Especially in the winter. Now, the one thing I've learned across the years, especially in January and even in February, because we all know, we all live around the same proximity, uh, we could get snow as far into May, okay? But when you are booking shows, especially home shows, when you're talking to your potential host, you wanna, you wanna decide on a date for their show, 
And before that conversation is ended, you want to also decide on an alternative date. So you want to say, Susie, great. I'm so excited we're going to be doing a show um, on the 27th of January. Now, we're going to assume we booked this in the beginning of the month, okay? As you're talking to her, I would say to her, okay, Susie, if for some reason January 27th doesn't work out for you because of snow or bad weather, what would be your second choice for a date? And then you work on a date and you pencil that in. You don't put it in pen because it's still open, but for the time being, you've already established with her an alternate date. And when you go through the booking process with that and you go through the host coaching calls, and if this is a virtual show, you can still get some cancellations there. You want to make sure you post that virtual date in your invite to them and any kind of correspondence you give to them so that they know right off the bat, if, if January 27th, we get a blizzard, the show is still on, but it's on now for January 29th. So set yourself up with a backup date. Um, and, and like I said, that's going to help you with cancellations. And that's going to help you to always stay focused on making sure you get to submit the amount of shows you want to submit. Question number four. What steps or actions are you doing consistently to ensure you have all the bookings you want? Now, we've all, what I mean by that is this. Everybody has a way to run their business. However, that it, it fits into your life. But I want you to think about this, especially for those of you who have kids. Um, for those of you who have, don't have kids, we have other things that we had to do consistently. I mean, think about some of the things that we just go through life with. If, you, if you're trying to accomplish something and you don't consistently try it until you accomplish it, you're never going to achieve it. I mean, I use this especially for you who have kids. If you said to your spouse or your mate, that's it. I am not buying diapers for Johnny anymore. I'm going to toilet train him. And you decide one day to start toilet training Johnny. Johnny decides he doesn't like it. Do you give up? Or do you consistently find ways to get Johnny to pee in the toilet? It's as simple as that. Simple things that we do every day, we have at some point consistently tried to do them because we didn't know how to do them and we taught ourselves how to do it. Or we got schooled so that we could teach, so they could teach us how to do it. That's the object here, folks. You have to consistently try what, and find what works for you and learn what you need to learn, but you can't give up. And it can't be when you feel like doing it. It has to be consistent. So I always revert back to that one hour or power hour of 15 minutes and four segments. If you only had 15 minutes each day to run your business, what would you focus on in that 15 minutes? And whatever that focus is, and in this case, if you don't have all the bookings you want, then it's bookings. If you could only walk into your office or you could only pick up that phone for 15 minutes and bookings are something you need to work on, then nothing else matters for 15 minutes. Nothing else matters. It's not about Facebook. It's not about your phone call. It's not about any of this. It's about 15 minutes of what are you doing to get bookings. So ultimately, you pick the circle. You pick the 15 minutes. You know, the typical power hour consists of bookings, recruiting, sales, 
and what they call your VIPs or your new consultants. Now, if you're not looking to, um, if you don't have team members or you're not looking to build a team right now or you don't have a team, then new consultants aren't the issue. So now you have an extra 15 minutes. So you pile that 15 minutes into something else, and in this case, it would be bookings. Okay? It's a good one, and a lot of people don't like this question, but I, I, I ask it to everybody I, everybody who I try to help get bookings. Other than social media, where else are you reaching out to get bookings? Let me, let me just tell you this quick little story of what happened to me just yesterday. I went to the post office. Now, being a guy is a little bit different. We don't really have the whole kind of bags we can carry. So I'm always wearing either a PC logo hat or a shirt. Obviously, I had a coat on, so I didn't have that. Um, but I'll always have something that kind of, you know, makes me identifiable to Pampa Chef. Long story short, I go to the post office, and for whatever reason, the post office was mobbed. I don't know why. But anyway, I'm standing in line, and I notice the woman in front of me has a box that she's kind of shipping off. Now, whether it was her box or not, I didn't know. But I, it was, it was from this, um, my God, it was a child store up here in Warwick that's, that, deals with educational tools and, and not educational tools, but um, teachers for them to kind of fill their classroom. It's over by the mall. Uh, Masha, you may know kids yeah. know, or something. Learning, like learning something. Or whatever. Okay. That's where the box was from. So she's holding the box and I've actually shopped there several times when I'm trying to do like um, my, um, my God, my, my boards and things like that for the teams. Um, the vision boards, I've often shopped there. So I see she's got this box. Didn't know the woman from Adam. And I said to her, oh, I see you shop at Kids Learning or whatever it is. And she said, no, actually I work there part time. Now, ironically, the whole conversation was very strange, but nonetheless, she starts off saying, that she works there. And I went into saying, oh, I love it. And, you know, it was, I went into some of the things I bought there. In the beginning of the conversation, she made it sound like she loved working there. So as I progressed and I told her what, why I bought some of the stuff I did for the vision boards for my Pampered Chef team, I didn't have to go any further. All she, oh my God, you sell Pampered Chef. Yes, I do. And she goes on about some of the products she loves. And I basically said to her, well, when was the last time you've seen a catalog? And she said, oh, it's been ages. Now, although I can't, I don't carry a bag, I always have a catalog with me tucked in my coat pocket. I proceeded while we're in line to give her the catalog. And she's, she's got it on the box. She's holding the box and she's flipping through the catalog. And she comes to the back page where it talks about the kit. And I told her, I said, well, wow, January is an amazing month to start your business because it can potentially earn 50% off the kit. And immediately she starts by saying, oh, me, maybe I'll replace this crappy job I had working part time at this place. And I'm like, oh my God, how that conversation just turned. She made it sound like it was the best thing since sliced bread in the beginning of the conversation working there. And now it's crappy and she doesn't earn enough money. Fast forward, long story short, she booked a show. And that's all it takes. All it takes is reaching out. I don't care. I mean, I have to be a little bit more strategic when I'm talking to women. I mean, obviously it's a little bit different for you ladies where you can comment on somebody like comment to somebody about, Oh, how you love their shoes or any of that. I don't want these women to think I'm coming on. To. So I have to be very careful in how I say that. Um, I've already been threatened once by somebody's boyfriend who was out in the parking lot. So I'm like, okay, let's take a different approach on this. I love my life a little bit more than my business. Um, so, but that's all it takes. 
comment on something. You know, their shoes, their dress, their coat, anything to get the conversation open. It doesn't take a lot, okay? I mean, it could be simple things like, you know, thanking them for, I don't know, holding the door open for you or whatever, okay? It, little things like that. But once you get the conversation open, that's half the battle. Half the battle with most of us is approaching somebody. You know, we were always taught when we were kids, don't talk to strangers. Well, now that's coming back to haunt us because we got so accustomed to not talking to strangers. Or we kind of look at them and we think, oh man, she's freaky looking. I ain't talking to her. Oh man, he, <laughs> he looks like he could crush me if I open a conversation with him. So I ain't talking to him. Stop. What difference does it make? It really doesn't. Okay. So you want to. Brian, can I, can I just share? Um, sure, absolutely. An, an experience that I had. I had an open house back in November and I had invited one of my daughters, um, her, her friend's mother, and she couldn't come because she had her other daughter's birthday party. And I remembered that. So I reached out to her and I just said, you know, I didn't know if you'd be interested in having a pampered chef party. And she said, oh my gosh, I absolutely would. I was talking to somebody else a few weeks ago and she, I mentioned Pampered Chef and she mentioned your name. I said, okay, great. So we booked a party. We're having a live show on January 28th. And so in with messaging her over the past week, I said to her, you know, um, have you ever thought about becoming a consultant? Well, she signed on yesterday. There you go. There you, you know, go. you just never know somebody who I randomly you know, just messaged about having a show. I didn't think she would, or, you know, I, would, I didn't know if she would, and she absolutely had wanted one, and my name had been mentioned to her. She just hadn't contacted me at that point. So, you know, you need to reach out. And I don't really know her, but now we will. <laughs> you know, and that's the secret. I mean, this is all about connecting with people. I mean, if you think about the struggles and you think about the whole concept of start to finish with a show, Think about what your mindset is and how you feel with once the show is booked. Your whole attitude changes, but there's that barrier of before the show and getting the booking that we put up in front of us. <laughs> your hair looks cute. <laughs> um, but ultimately, we do that to ourselves. In situations that we have to do it, we do it. But in situations like this, when we feel, oh no, I'm not gonna ask her, I'll ask somebody else. Oh no, or oh no, I'm gonna spend you know, 15 minutes tomorrow talking to people. I, I just, I don't know, I just don't feel comfortable talking to them today. Think about all of the, how can I say this? Think about if you have another job outside of the house or even think about the things that we do on a daily basis. Just think about not doing one or two of those things and how chaotic your life would be or what could potentially happen. I mean, for those of you that have a job, if you woke up in the morning and felt, oh, I don't feel like going to work today, how many times are you going to be able to get away with that before you have no job? Think about, <laughs> for those of you who have kids, think about, oh, I am making dinner for them. How many times are you going to get away with that? Okay, it's those things that we know we have to do, that we just do them. As responsible adults, we just do them. As responsible parents, you do them. I'm not a parent. I have two dogs. That's the life of it. Okay, but the bottom line is think about those things you have to do and how that just naturally comes to you. I mean, uh, uh, Jim and I were having the same conversation just two days ago, how he says, you know, because he's a state constable. 
as one of his jobs. So he goes, you know, he's, I have no problem going up to anybody's door. I don't have any, I don't have any idea who they are, or who's going to answer the door, how they're going to, you know, if they're going to threaten me, whatever, to serve them paper. I have no problem doing that. He says, but to go up to somebody and ask them to yeah. book a show or. Well, it's because what happens is when we approach that person that we're going to talk to, we go into it with a mindset of a business person mm -hmm. before we go into it and in a mindset of a person. Mm -hmm. You know, I said this to everybody who was at my last team meeting. When you came out of the womb, did you come out holding an apron and a, and a whisk? No, you didn't come out as a pampered chef consultant. But somehow, once we get into the Pampered Chef business, that takes over. And we approach everybody as a potential customer and client, and we talk about the business before we talk about pe what people would normally talk about in general everyday life. And when we do that, we are setting ourselves up for a negative feedback. You have to remember that you're a person first and treat that person like a person before you approach that person like a customer. Does that make sense? You know, and that's where complimenting them comes into play. That's where just opening up a conversation. I mean, in that particular scenario, if the woman didn't have a, bo <coughs> have a box in her hand, I could have said something like, oh my God, you know, I've never seen the post office be so busy on a Wednesday but we're opening up the line of communication. You know, like I often revert to this as well. I mean, I recently had to switch doctors because Alan's medical plan, which I'm covered by, um, we're in a new medical plan. So I had to recently switch doctors and we all know how that's an uncomfortable feeling. You get used to the same doctor over and over. Um, and it was just very off the wall. I mean, the, the, the other doctor I had was, um, I mean, I've had him for years. But here this doctor comes in and, and, you know, of course, now he has to ask a whole new series of questions. And then, of course, it's time for the physical. So, he, you know, you've got to do the whole disrobing thing. And the interesting thing is, the first thought that came to mind was, how quick would I get undressed for this guy if that's the first question he asked me? I mean, would you feel comfortable going to a new doctor who asks you absolutely no questions and says, the first thing says to you, take your pants off? I'm not quite sure I'd be comfortable with that. At least ask me a few questions first. Make me feel comfortable. Make me understand why you want to do this. But that's the thing, we need to open up the lines of communication. And that's where it stands. Um, so the, 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 the point of that question number five really was, don't rely on social media. Reach out to at least, and you hear this all the time with home office, you know, the three, two, one concept. Reach out to three people a day book at least two shows a week and recruit or add one team member a month. That's the whole three to one concept, okay? So you really want to make sure you're reaching out to three people, okay? And I'm gonna kind of follow up and skip question six for a second. And what I want you to do is kind of think about, and you've heard this, some of you who've been around for a while, you've heard this. You know, the, the old statement, go for no, okay? I guarantee you there would be success if you follow the steps of going for no. And Masha, I think you're familiar with this whole go for no thing. Um, I know you've been around just as long as I have, haven't you? Um, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but basically, you take a piece of paper and you draw a bunch of lines on it till you have 100 boxes. Okay, and in the box, you're going to put the word no. You physically write the word no. I mean, you do it on an Excel spreadsheet or Word document, whatever you do for you, okay? 
And every contact you make or every call you make and you get a no, you cross off a no. And then, you know, give yourself a little reward system. Say, okay, um, once I hit 10 no's, I don't know, I get to go out for a glass of wine or I don't know, I get to eat a bowl of ice cream or I don't know, whatever your treat is, however you treat yourself. <clears throat> because the object here is the more no's you go for and every, every call that you make or every contact you make, if you've already set yourself up um, mentally that you're gonna hear a no, then hearing it's no problem. It's only when you want a yes and you hear a no that it deflates you. So if you go for that no, I guarantee you get yes, yeses. Now, who are some of the people you can approach other than people who are on social media? And even maybe some of these people will be on social media, but you're not contacting them via social media. Okay, I want you to go through the alphabet, A through Z, and you write it down on a piece of paper, and pick five, say, okay, well, it's what, 20, help me out here, Marsha, you, you used to be a school teacher, there was what, 24, 26 letters in the alphabet? Uh, uh, 26? <laughs> okay. My nine-year-old says yes. <laughs> twenty-six. Okay. So a hundred divided by twenty-six. So you get about four people, give or take. Okay. So you want to put four. You want to put the number four next to each letter. Okay. So you want to pick four A's, four B's, four C's. Now, when you're thinking about these no's, let's start with A. Okay. You may say, okay, I'm gonna contact four A's. Now, what do the A's mean? A's mean, and you pick the category, you're gonna contact four people you know whose first name starts with an A. Or you're going to um, pick four people who work for a company that start with A. You fill in the category, but basically you have to reach out to four people fit into that category of the A category that you chose. Right? It could be something simple as four people you know who like apples. Or it's, you, again, you create the category, but it has to start with A. And then you run down the category, A's, B's, C's, D's. It could be things like B's. Uh, you're going to contact four people who you know who have blonde hair or four people you know who have um, children who are boys. You, know, you, have, you may have to get a little creative with the categories, but that's how you work on your, your 100. Because I know some of you are probably sitting there thinking, this guy is insane. I don't know 100 people. And you may not. But when you break it down into categories, I'm sure that's going to help you with reaching outside the box. Like if you don't know four A's, here's, here's one, I, I, although I don't shop there, you're going to reach out to one person who works at Aldi's. Make it a point to go into an Aldi's store. I was just there tonight. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so it's not difficult once you get the list together. And I strongly suggest that you write your list first. So make your box of 100, get your, um, all your B's lined up, all your B's lined up, all your C's, and it doesn't have to be done in one day, but the bottom line is set yourself a target date and say, okay, my list of 100 no's is gonna be completed by, and you set the date. But don't forget to reward yourself along the way, okay? And then the last question I want you guys to think about is, I want you to think about either the last person you talk to or the next person you're going to talk to. And are you prepared and do you know what to say 
when they respond to no. Oh, excuse me, when they respond with no. So think about the question you're going to have in your head. Think about that question you're going to ask them. Mm -hmm. And do you know or, or are you comfortable with what you're going to say to them as a response to that no? Because that's key. Because again, the conversation does not have to end with no. But it will end with no if you don't know how to respond to them. Because our immediate reaction is to say, oh, okay, that's okay. Thanks anyway. And you stop. But the object really is to understand what no means. Mm -hmm. Does no really mean no? Does it mean not now? Does it mean never? That's what you have to know how to respond to. Because if you, if you line yourself up right and you know how to respond, then there's really not too many obstacles that would come your way that you couldn't turn into something positive. Even if it's not a show today or a show next week or a show mm -hmm. next week. I mean, think about how many times we've all had a situation. I mean, Masha is a perfect example. You were talking about your, your open house. Um, it didn't happen that day. And here it is, you know, a, a week or a month later. I don't know, I'm not sure when you had your open house. But the bottom line is, whatever it is you approached her with that day kept the Pampered Chef business of hosting a show kind of on the back burner for her. Right. So no doesn't necessarily mean no forever, but we have to dig. We have to ask the question. We have to find that out because in most cases, no doesn't really mean, mean no. They just don't want to commit to anything at that moment. Mm -hmm. okay. So I want you to think about that. I mean, that pretty much wrapped up what I wanted to, I mean, we could go on all night with this, but obviously, you know, I want to kind of keep these to 35, 45 minutes long. I know you, your, your time is valuable. Um, does anybody have any questions? Any, I mean, did anybody find any of this helpful? Yes, thank you. Yeah, I did. Yep. It's a simple process. The one thing we got to understand is look in the mirror is your worst enemy. It's not the person you're going to open a conversation with. It's not the person you're going to talk to. It's the person you see in the mirror. Because for some godforsaken reason, everything is great once we have all the bookings we want. <laughs> but when that doesn't happen, the world falls apart. Mm -hmm. And we find ourselves struggling. We get into this depressed mode. We get into this, oh, I'll do it tomorrow mode. And then next thing you know, find the eight ball with no shows on your calendar, feeling like crap, asking yourself, why am I doing this business? I could be doing something so much easier when in reality there is nothing easier. Okay. Um, it really is... Consistent business with intentional actions will bring tremendous success. But you have to be consistent and you have to be intentional. Because the longer you stay intentional, and Masha can vouch for this, the longer you stay consistent and the longer you stay intentional, you will reach a point where business will come to you. I have totally revamped and I don't know if revitalized myself since December, you know, and starting December because I wasn't, I wasn't happy with how my business went and how honestly 
I was working with my team in 2017 as a whole. And I have been on numerous calls, uh, these Zoom calls. This is, I think, my third one in a row, you know, night. I've been listening to trainings um, on different Facebook groups. I've been researching. I am spending most of my days when the kids are in school, I am totally revamping and, and doing things differently. And since December 20th, I mean, I've, and this is a lot for me in recent years, but I've signed on two people and I have three more that are um, very seriously considering signing on. And, and it's, and it, sometimes it takes that. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it takes stepping back, looking at what, what's working, what's not working. Um, I mean, looking at what it is we want, you know, where do we want to go? What do we want from this business? Are we getting everything we want? You know, it, it, it's no different than, uh, especially for some of you who work outside in, in a different, uh, at a different job. Usually the end of December, even maybe late November, early December, if not by the, 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 the second week in January, you can bet your company has given you some form of evaluation okay because they need to determine where, do you, where they want to go in this upcoming year and how you fit into that picture and it's gotten to the point now these days where we have to do our own well we used to i'm not in the corporate world anymore but you had to do your own self-evaluations so imagine what that was like Writing how good you are, how bad you are, what you're good at, what you're not good at, what do you expect, how much money? You just did that today. And there you go. There you go. It's awful. And, yeah. And what's going to happen is they're going to look at that. They kind of revamp it. Then they have somebody sit down and look at it with you. And mm -hmm. then every single action you take from the time that paper's handed in to the time it's review time is going to determine whether you may or may not get what you're asking for. It's no different than here. And I know a lot of us who've been around, and I include myself in this, as soon as that kind of calendar hits December 16th or December 17th, whenever is the, the cutoff date for Christmas delivery, the first thing I do is kind of kick back and, and go, ah, I made it. I made it. <laughs> I didn't lose it throughout the year. I made it. And basically, that's when the self-evaluation starts taking place. You start looking at what you achieved this past year. Where do you want to go after that? What do you want to do in the upcoming year? Um, you can bet I always take at least a couple of days to kind of shut the computer off and just clean out my office. Somehow things look better when you just move something from point A to point B and dust what was under point A. I don't know. It's a psychological thing for me. I don't know. But the bottom line is that's what we do it. We're no different than, than the, the, the companies out there. And, and like Masha said, she did a self-evaluation of you know, what she was doing and what was right and what, well, what she felt was right and, and was going right and what wasn't. You know? And she's doing this with um, an envisionment of where she wants to go in 2018. And, and look at this, the, the, the success she's already seen. You know, you always have to, to reinvent, shake it up, you know, move about, you know, look at, you know, different ways that what's working for you and what's not working for you. And that's where you hone in and that's where you get regenerated to move forward. And that's in every aspect of your life not just necessarily this business. So think about that. Our next call, I mean, I want to, again, I want to thank you guys for, for zooming in. Um, our next call, as I said, was um, the, I don't know, when did I say it was? Uh, the, the 24th. And this is going to be a great topic. Um, the topic for the 24th is customer care. And why should you care? Gives you something to think about. And what does that mean? Okay. 
um, but you'll find out on the next call. So I, again, I hope you guys got something out of the call and I hope to um, make 2018 with you one of the best years ever. All right, guys. Thanks, Brian. Bye-bye.